The Mason Even Model 4600 pneumatic valve positioner design is based on the force balance principle. The input signal pressure is opposed by a feedback spring. The 4600 positioner is used with the Camflex 2 valve and the Sigma F actuator. The essential function of the positioner is to make the valve stroke proportional to the input signal from a controller or to modify the natural flow characteristic of the valve itself through the use of a cam. It permits split ranging of valves. It also may be used to provide an increase in response speed or to reverse the valve response to an instrument signal. That is, the instrument signal opens or closes the valve. Remember the difference between a direct and reverse acting positioner. Direct acting is an increasing input signal produces an increase in output. Reverse acting is an increasing input signal produces a decrease in output. For the direct acting positioner as the input pressure increases the diaphragm assembly moves to the left. The pilot plug follows the diaphragm assembly movement because the pilot plug is pushed by the pilot spring. As the pilot plug moves to the left, it connects the output circuit to the supply circuit, thus increasing the pressure on the actuator. The increasing pressure to the actuator moves the valve plug. The actuator and valve plug movement causes the cam to rotate. The lever arm is pivoted at one end and the cam follower end rides on the cam as it rotates. The cam transmits the valve plug movement through the cam follower to the feedback spring. In this case, it compresses the spring. The valve plug continues to move until the feedback spring force balances the force of the instrument signal on the diaphragm. In the new balanced state, the valve plug is positioned in a programmed relationship to the instrument signal. The relationship is governed by the cam. The cam is the intermediate element in the feedback mechanism between the actuator and the feedback spring. Its profile determines the relationship between the valve plug position and the control signal. The cam provides linear, split range, or equal percentage control characteristics for the valve. The pilot is essentially a three-way sliding valve. The pilot plug regulates supply air flow to and from the actuator to the exhaust port. The position of the plug governed by the diaphragm, determines the output pressure of the positioner. Like most valve positioners, the Model 4600 is equipped with a bypass. The bypass valve permits the positioner to be isolated for maintenance while operating the valve directly with the instrument signal. By turning the nylon valve to the bypass position, the output pressure to the actuator is blocked and the instrument signal passes both to the positioner diaphragm and the actuator. The gauges have been removed from this positioner to get a better view of the red arrow on the bypass valve, which is a position indicator. The bypass valve does not block the air supply pressure to the pilot assembly. Therefore, the air supply should be shut off before disassembling the positioner. When a Camflex valve uses a supply pressure higher than 20 PSIG to overcome the high pressure drop across the valve, the 3 to 15 PSIG instrument signal may not be sufficient to operate the valve when the positioner is bypassed. Furthermore, if the positioner with a high supply pressure is bypassed suddenly, the high pressure in the actuator 
may damage the diaphragm in the positioner or the control instrument. The bypass valve should be used only if the positioner is direct acting, not split ranged or the supply pressure is 20 PSIG. Now work exercise 4 in your workbook. Mounting the 4600 positioner on a camflex valve requires a mounting plate. The mounting plate is held by two flathead screws to the yoke. The positioner is mounted to the mounting plate by two screws with the gauges nearest the actuator. The cam takeoff hole must be centered about the shaft before tightening the mounting screws. The positioner is mounted to the cover of the Sigma F by two screws with the gauges nearest the actuator indicating scale. The cam coupling is positioned on the shaft with the key engaged in the shaft slot and the set screws to the top and side. The coupling hold down screw with the lock washer fastens the cam coupling to the shaft in the valve. The cam lobe lever arm orientation and air supply connection is dependent on the span, valve characteristic, and positioner action. This page from the Mason Elan instruction manual provides that information. The example used will be for an air to open Sigma F valve with a 3 to 15 PSIG direct acting positioner giving the valve a linear characteristic. From the instruction manual, we find that cam lobe 1 will provide a linear characteristic for a 3 to 15 PSIG input. For a direct acting positioner, the lever arm will be mounted on the left side. And this indicates the air supply connection for a direct acting positioner. It also indicates the signal in output to the actuator, and the exhaust ports. If the positioner is reverse acting, then the supply and exhaust connections have to be interchanged. The supply gauge must be removed and replaced by a 1 8 inch plug. The supply gauge can be connected to the filter regulator by using a 1 8 to 1 quarter bushing. With the air supply and signal shut off, the valve will be closed. Place the lever arm to the left position. Place the cam on the cam holder so the proper lobe, lobe 1 in this case, is against the cam follower. Tighten the washer and screw. Align the low range signal line on the cam to the vertical line on the positioner case. And center the cam on the cam follower roller, then tighten the set screws. Turn on the air supply and adjust it to 20 PSIG. Make sure the positioner is not bypassed, then apply an input signal equal to the low end of the signal range, 3 PSIG. Turn the zero nut to adjust the valve plug to its proper position, closed in this case. Then tighten the zero lock nut. Apply an input signal equal to the high end of the signal range, 15 PSIG. If the valve does not fully stroke for full signal span, the feedback spring rate is too high. Loosen the spring lock screw and turn the spring on the spring end to increase the number of active coils and decrease the spring rate. If full stroke is reached before applying full signal span, 
turn the spring to decrease the number of active coils and increase the spring rate. After making a spring adjustment, it will be necessary to reset the zero. After the zero adjustment is made, tighten the zero lock nut. Continue to make zero and span adjustments until the desired valve response is reached. When the span adjustment has been completed, retighten the spring locking screw. Now work exercise five in your workbook. The next example of calibrating the 4600 positioner will be on an air to close Camflex 2 valve. The positioner will be split ranged, reverse acting, and will give the valve a linear characteristic with 3 to 9 PSIG input. According to the instruction manual, the lever arm will be mounted on the right side and cam lobe 10 will be used. The supply and exhaust have to be interchanged. Because the supply and exhaust have been interchanged, the supply gauge does not measure the supply pressure and must be removed and plugged to keep from confusing others. Place the lever arm on the right and tighten the screw which holds it in place. Turn on the air supply and adjust it to the proper pressure, generally 20 to 25 PSIG. Make sure the positioner is not bypassed. With the input signal at 0 PSIG, manually depress the feedback spring to close the valve. While keeping the valve closed by depressing the feedback spring, place the cam on the cam holder so the proper cam lobe, lobe 10, is against the cam follower. Replace the washer and screw on the cam and release the feedback spring. If the valve does not remain closed when the feedback spring is released, adjust the zero nut to seat the valve. With the valve seated, Align the low signal line of lobe 10 to the vertical line on the positioner case and tighten the set screws. Apply an input signal equal to the low end of the input signal range, 3 PSIG. Turn the zero nut to adjust the valve plug to the closed position. The positioner output to actuator should be approximately 15 PSIG. Tighten the zero lock nut. Apply an input signal equal to the high end of the signal input range, 9 PSIG. Make the span adjustment until the valve is in the open position. The positioner output to the actuator should be approximately 3 PSIG. Continue to make zero and span adjustments until the desired valve response is reached. When the span adjustment has been completed, retighten the spring locking screw. The same 4600 positioner operates on both the Camflex 2 and Sigma F actuators. The only difference being there are two different cams, one for the Camflex and one for the Sigma F. Make sure you have the right cam. The part number is stamped on each. Each cam has two sides. One side has lobes 1 through 6, and the other side has lobes 7 through 12. The instruction manual gives examples showing the low range line of the lobes. This is the line on the cam that is aligned to the line on the positioner case for mounting the cam. The instruction manual for the 4600 positioner will be included in the student workbook. 
When troubleshooting this positioner, you are reminded to look for the obvious. Make sure you have the proper air supply and instrument signal. The valve must be properly mounted in the line so the flow through it is in the right direction. The positioner must be properly mounted using the correct cam lobe and the correct air connections. The bypass must be in the proper position. If the positioner is found to be the problem, check the zero adjustment and adjust the zero nut if necessary. Lock with the lock nut. Check the span adjustment and adjust it if necessary. Remember that zero and span are interacting. When one is adjusted, the other needs to be checked. Adjust the input signal from minimum to maximum and observe the input gauge. If the input gauge does not respond to the signal, a diaphragm may be broken. To replace a defective diaphragm, remove all the air pressure from the positioner. Remove the gauges and unscrew the cap screws that hold the body to the case. Separate the body and case. Positioner insensitivity may be the result of a sticking pilot spool whose movement may be impeded by foreign matter such as dirt or metal particles. Partial blockage of air passages caused by too much oil in airlines or blockage of vent holes. To clean the pilot spool, unscrew it from the body. Unscrew the end plug and remove the pilot plug. Use a clean cloth to clean the pilot assembly parts. When reassembling the pilot assembly, put silicone grease on the O-rings. Install the pilot spring correctly. The end having the smallest diameter must be in contact with the pilot plug. Now work exercise 6 in your workbook.